This video will detail some easy to follow ways to increase the speed that it takes for your home page to load in the browsers. Now if your blog posts contain images, then the first thing that you want to consider is optimizing those images that are currently on your site. Now, you can do this with the help of plugins like EWWW Image Optimizer or Lazy Load or Hammy. All of these can be found in the WordPress.org plugin directory. Just go to WordPress.org, go to plugins, and then do a search for that particular plugin. Or just do a Google search for WordPress image optimizers, and you'll have several to choose from. Now, if your home page has a lot of image icons that link to like social media sites or background images, or other images that show up on any and all of your pages, and you might want to have what are called CSS image sprites generated and put to use instead of having each individual image called on each time a page of your site is loaded into your visitor's browser. The load time speed is not increased that much by using sprites, but if your site generates a lot of traffic, then using sprites will majorly reduce the bandwidth usage. Now to learn more about sprites, you can just simply Google CSS sprites or CSS sprite tutorials or check out sites like spritecow.com or cssprites.com or spriteme.org. Okay, now that you have your awesome images all nice and optimized, you should consider using the more tag on all of your posts. For example, if we take a look at my post here and I've got a ton of text, I've got pictures and videos, and this is all just one post by the way, and if you have, say, 10 to 15 or 20 posts set up to show on your home page, then your visitor's browser will be loading all that stuff each and every time that they go to your site. And that's just using a ton of your server's bandwidth and taking a lot of time to fully load in your visitor's browser when it doesn't have to. So let's take a look at the post editor and use that more tag that I was referring to. So right here is that particular post with all the images and the videos and the text. And if right up here, say somewhere in an area of the beginning of that post, you can kind of cut things off to where it might entice the visitor to click on the link to go to the rest of that post. Kind of like a cliffhanger at the end of a TV show to get you to come back next week to watch the rest of it. With that thought in mind, let's say right here, I put my cursor, come on up here, and this is the more tag right here. Just click on that. Now let's go ahead and update. So now instead of having all the text, all the images, all of that stuff showing up on the home page, it's still going to show up on the actual post page. That's not affecting the post page at all. But if we come back here to the home page and refresh, come on back up here to the top, you can see that that one post that had all the images, the videos, and that ton of text has just these four lines and a link here that says continue reading. Now all this is customizable. You can put whatever you want in here and you can put that link anywhere in that post. If you want to have that first image or that first video to show up on the home page, then move that more tag down below that. But imagine if you had something like this on each one of these posts, your front page or your home page would load in seconds, maybe even one second. Another thing is the number of posts that are showing up on your home page. Let's check that out. But you can reduce that too by coming over to settings, go to reading, maybe adjust the blog pages show at most to say five. That way there's only five posts that show up on the home page and then your home page will load lickety split. And you can have, let's go ahead and save this real quick. Okay, so now we've got the settings saved. Let's come on back over to our home page, refresh. And you see how that went from a little bitty dink, dinky thing to a much bigger scroller? Well, that's because we don't have all those tons of posts on here. We only have five of them. And if we come down to the very bottom, you can see this link right here. And of course, this is theme specific. Depending upon how your theme is set up, it may look a little bit different. This is the default 2013 theme. But if we click on this, it'll then show more posts. And if you do have a sidebar over here, you might have something over here for most recent posts or categories that will further help your visitors navigate through your site. The key thing though is to increase the speed at which your home page loads and you do that by minimizing the amount of stuff that you got on your home page. And speaking of stuff, you might consider the overall design of your site or theme. If you got a whole bunch of stuff going on in the sidebars and pop-ups and flyouts and other gizmos that you're using to try and gather leads or opt-ins or 
sell affiliate products or AdSense ads, you might take a long, hard look at scaling some of that stuff back, especially if you find that a particular item is not working. Again, every little tidbit on your homepage will affect the load time in your visitor's browser. So if it's not doing you any good, get it out of there. Now, lastly, if you're using a bunch of plugins on your WordPress site, you should check out a particular plugin called P3, or Plugin Performance Profiler. And what this does is just like it says here, it sees which plugins are slowing down your site. It puts together a report for you, and it makes it a lot easier for you to make a more informed decision on, do you really need that plugin to do that particular thing? because you can now see how it's affecting the load time of your site. And that's going to bring us to the end of this video on optimizing your WordPress homepage. Thanks for watching and you have a great day.